Okay, hi everyone, my name's Sheila Kanani and I will be your host tonight on our very first Interstellar Icarus interview. For our maiden voyage, we have the pleasure of talking to Icarus designer, Milos Stanich. Milos got his, inter, uh, his undergrad and master's degree at the University of Novi Sad in Serbia and enrolled in a mechanical engineering PhD program at the University of Alabama in Huntsville in the USA in uh, January 2010. Um, his interests lie in general fluid mechanics, computational fluid dynamics, nuclear fusion, hypersonics and advanced propulsion concepts. Um, and he's currently working in the field of plasma jet magneto-inertial fusion, or PJMIF for short, particularly focusing on modelling of plasma jet pr propagation, merging and plasma linear implosion via smooth particle hydrodynamics code. Wow, Milos, that all sounds rather complicated. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's a bit of a mouthful to say as well. Um, before we get into the PJMIF, uh, let's start with a little bit of a biography. Um, could you tell us what first interested you in space and space travel? Uh, hi, Sheila. Well, uh, I, I guess that that part of the story is kind of very typical for most of the people that are into engineering and space, mm -hmm. and we'll start off with uh, early uh, me watching early episodes of Star Trek, I guess, oh, right, and Star yeah. Wars, and then uh, slightly mm -hmm. drifted into that into that area. I actually remember on one occasion, and it was actually quite not not so long ago, right before um, I finished my undergrad. Back in Serbia, I was doing some internet quizzes, and there was a question um, on ion ion engines oh, okay. for spacecraft. And mm -hmm. the question was, do these uh, uh, engines actually exist, referring to the TIE fighters from, from Star Wars? And I was yeah. like, of course not, it's sci-fi, but it turns out that there are ion engines. And then it's a long story how I started researching that, and I came here, learned a lot about it, and spontaneously just drifted into space industry, I guess. Oh, okay, so it was a uh, down to the science fiction that really got you interested in it, which it's got a lot to answer for, doesn't it? Star Trek and Star Wars. Yeah, um, it does. It does. <laughs> so, what made you move from the Ser from Serbia to the US? Was it was it a lack of space interest in Serbia, or was it a particular job? Or well, um, it's actually more complicated than that. I was an exchange student over here, okay. and as I said, I literally met my current advisor. Yeah. Um, he, he taught um, an electric propulsion class and I was amazed by all the ion engines and, and all the advanced technologies and I literally walked into his office one day and told him look I'm really I know I want to do a PhD at that point I was um, my fourth year of studies mm -hmm. undergrad basically but I had to I had to go back to finish my program back in Serbia I needed to get my master's degree over there and he said well I don't have any money now but let's stay in touch and you know um, if the opportunity arises, I'll give you a call. And so it was, you know, it was just uh, a random day in summer of 2009 when my advisor sent me an email saying, I got the money, want to come here and do your PhD? Oh, right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how I ended up being here in Alabama, basically. Okay. So you've mentioned that you're in Alabama doing a PhD. Could you tell us a bit more about your PhD? What's the title? What have you found out so far? Or how far along are you? That kind of thing. Oh boy, that's a, that's a complicated and long uh, answer. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm currently working, as you said, I'm currently working in the field of plasma jet driven magneto inertial fusion, which sounds awfully complicated, mm -hmm. but it's basically just imagine a lot of plasma jets that are kind of spherically distributed along a sphere, right. and you simultaneously fire them towards another gaseous target, plasma mm -hmm. target in the middle. And all the jets come in, they merge, and then they compress the target, and at peak compression you actually reach the fusion, uh, fusion uh, okay. pressures, temperatures, densities, conditions for fusion in general. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a collaborative project between you know, Los Alamos Laboratories, that's where the experiment is taking place, okay. University of New Mexico, University of Alabama and Huntsville, um, Hyper-V Technologies, PRISM, TechX and many others, uh, um, and we're currently, I mean, each, each of us does its own thing, 
I'm doing and how my university is doing the theoretical research behind it. So we're doing the simulations and comparing the simulations to experiments. And so far, we're on schedule and it all looks very nice and promising. Mm -hmm. I hope you'll say that. Okay, so do you, um, does someone else do the experiments in Los Alamos and then you analyze the data, or is what you're doing quite theoretical? Yeah, well, that's exactly what's going on currently. I mean, we're, it's, it's happening almost as we talk about it. Um, so they're running, they're shooting currently single jets from a rail gun, a plasma rail gun in Los Alamos, and they're measuring densities and properties of, of the jet individually. Mm -hmm. And my job over here is to use the smooth particle hydrodynamics code to uh, model those same jets and to okay. see, uh, you know, to try to match the experiments, and get the same kind of results. So later on, the total idea in the end is to use, once we verify the code is showing, is matching the experimental results on an elementary basis yeah. by analyzing a single jet, then we can say, okay, let's make 30 of these jets and let's make a full-blown simulation of the whole process mm -hmm. so we can scale up, basically. And that's what my PhD is about. Okay. It's about scaling laws for PJMF. I see, I see. So did Project Icarus find you or did you find them and did you get involved with Icarus because of your PhD or was it a bit of both? I, I guess, I guess um, it's kind of funny now, now that I... When, when you ask those questions in that order, because it turns out that it's completely random, almost. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What happened, I, I, I wrote a paper for the International Astronautical Congress that was uh, mm -hmm. taking place in Prague in 2010, yeah. Czech Republic. And so I went there, my university paid for it, and it was Monday morning. We just finished a meeting with the uh, NASA administrator, Charles Bolden. Oh, brilliant. I got out, and before the first session started, I decided to have a cup of water. So I went to find some, went, went to find some water, and in front of me was this guy standing, and me being curious, I just looked at, you know, you, you all carried those little tags yeah. in conferences, and it said, Kelvin Long, uh, okay. uh, UK, and I, and I have um, um, an uncle and cousins in, in, the, um, in the UK, and I just felt like chatting a little bit and asking, like, where are you from, what do you do? And he's like, well, you know, we have this project, it's an interstellar mission, uh, designed for interstellar mission, we're using fusion propulsion, I'm doing a fusion-related uh, PhD. And I'm like, no kidding, I do too. And pretty much from there, just went, like, I signed up immediately because um, I found an interesting idea, and that's how I ended up being an Icarus. Oh, brilliant. So it really was a sort of chance meeting over a cup of yeah, water. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, literally, the first person I met at the IAC that year was Kelvin Long. <laughs> we had a coffee, we had a chat, and I signed up for it. Yeah? Oh, brilliant. So could you tell us, or sort of explain to us a bit better, how PJMIF will be useful for Project Icarus? Um... Well, fusion, um, as, as you might know, is one of the rare things that can achieve actually uh, necessary performance for interstellar flights. Yeah. And there are several ways to do uh, fusion. I believe we're going to touch upon some of them. However, uh, PJMIF is a hybrid approach between the two more conventional approaches, if there is such a thing as conventional nuclear fusion. Yeah. So, the, the, name it says, the name itself says that it's, mag it's a partially magnetic confinement and partially inertial confinement. Mm -hmm. The inertial confinement portion comes from the fact that we use kinetic energy of those jets that I described coming in and merging. So, we use th that kinetic energy to compress the target and keep it in there. Mm -hmm. However, the magnetic portion comes from the fact that the target itself is actually a, a plasmoid formation with an embedded magnetic field of its own. Okay. So why is that important? How is that different from other approaches? Well, it turns out that magnetic fields actually are quite important because they trap the high energy ions mm -hmm. and electrons within the domain of the fusion. Okay. Where the fusion reaction takes place. So once you start compressing the target with the embedded magnetic field in it, the magnetic field gets really, really 
is strong. And by generating such high magnetic fields within the target while simultaneously achieving uh, fusion conditions, we argue that we can actually make, make fusion more efficient. Okay, I see. And some preliminary studies that, that have been done uh, for fusion propulsion based on PJMIF show actually much higher efficiency mm -hmm. of the process and much higher potential for, for, uh, for fuel oh. utilization and things like that. Okay, so PJMIF is better than conventional schemes such as the magnetic confinement and the inertial because it's kind of an amalgamation of both of them together. Is that right? Or? That is the idea. Now, the problem is here, and um, you'll probably discuss a lot more on fusion during other interviews as well with Kelvin and Richard and Andreas. It's, it's harsh to say immediately that it's better. Each okay. approach has its pros and cons. Sure. And none of them are easy. That's for sure. Um, from a purely theoretical standpoint, from what we've been seeing for now from the simulations, mm -hmm. there are indications that it actually will work eventually I mean, once we reach the end of our experiment, yeah. experimental uh, research. So, however, the advantage of magnetic and inertial confinement fusion are that they are much more mature. Yeah, okay. So we already have facilities that have been heavily invested in uh, doing, trying to do inertial confinement and magnetic confinement. We see, yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have that, that, those funds yet. Yeah. So we, we can't really, we haven't performed the full-blown experiment, really? full-scale yeah. experiments. So yeah. Yes, there are theoretical indications that it's much more efficient, but until we finish the full research, I cannot say anything with certainty. So. Of course. And it always comes down to funding as well, unfortunately. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, yes. Yeah. So do, do you think if it is successful, there could be a sort of commercial aspect to PJMIF um, in the future, sort of soon or in the, in the far future? I don't know. Uh, yes, I do. Otherwise, uh, I'm actually... Um, I wasn't so familiar with the concept before I started working on it, but mm -hmm. once I realized what I'm working on, I, I became pretty much fanatic about it because, um, first of all, the major dri major drivers for, for PJMIF are the railguns. Okay. And railguns themselves are much more simple in construction than lasers, for instance. Mm -hmm. Because you can make a simple railgun in your own backyard right now if yeah. you went out and tried to make it, you could do it. <laughs> so that would drastically keep the cost of, of inertial fusion, magneto inertial fusion down. Uh -huh. And aside from it being more an energy efficient in terms of achieving fusion, the hardware necessary for achieving it is actually, seems to be much cheaper than for a magnetic or inertial confinement fusion. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So, yeah. hopefully, hopefully we'll have some day reactors that are uh, based on PJMF or a similar concept. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So, when you're not doing your PhD, I know how, how much time a PhD takes up, so this question might be slightly tenuous, but when you're not doing your PhD or Project Icarus, uh, do you have any spare time? And if so, what are your hobbies outside of... Uh, PJMIF and, and Project Icarus? Um, I love football. Not American <laughs> football. Okay. Proper football. <laughs> I love football and actually um, do, you do it regularly over here. There's a really well developed amateur league here in Huntsville. Oh, right. So I, I play games um, sometimes, even two times a week. And, Brilliant. And I go swimming. And every Friday we have a really. We actually have it's interesting. Sorry, we have two bars over here in Huntsville. And Huntsville <laughs> is a relatively small place. Right. But two bars that made it to a hundred top bars in the US wow. um, selected by the draft magazine. So okay. They have enormous um, palette of beers. Yeah. And engineers from around and some other people just get there every Friday and we have um, a great time. <laughs> That's fantastic. 
Well, sadly, we've run out of time, but if anyone watching has got any questions, please feel free to email in and we will endeavour to answer them in due course. Thank you very much for taking us on such a wonderful journey, Milos. It's been, fant fast blah, 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 been fascinating and fantastic. Um, until next time, folks, on the in Icarus Interstellar interview range. Bye, Milos. Bye, Shiva. Thank you. Thanks.